who who were you? You know, were you lost? Like, did you? Who were you trying to be? What were you trying to be? What was the turning point? Like when it turned from fun to trouble, you know, where you didn't think it was a problem to where you thought it was a problem to where it is a problem. How is another, how the frick did I play at the level that I was playing at while I was doing that? Like, I had four picks one year when I was freaking, I was drinking every other day. If I'd be on that same path, like, I mean, would I even still be in the league? Like, you know what I mean? Like, would I be dead? That's when it kind of hit me, like, bro, like, you, you, you're, you're an alcoholic, dude. Like, you're an alcoholic. That's the hard part. Like, taking a second, like, looking back at your life and kind of realizing all the people you affected and that's the hard part. Growing up, I really didn't want to be around alcohol like that just because I saw how my parents were, you know, coming home from practice and, you know, both of them being, you know, ha having drinks and arguing with each other. <laughs> like, my dad being upstairs, my mom being downstairs and just arguing with each other, like, just yelling. Like, I'm like, arguing over this, this dumb stuff just because they were drinking. It was like, it was draining. I, I wanted to stay as far away from that as possible because I really saw it firsthand. Uh, but obviously it didn't last very long. <laughs> I think psychologically, you know, when I was going through the shit, I would give myself an excuse. It's like, oh, it runs in my family's blood. You know, it's just, it's just who I am. And, you know, my my real dad's been in and out of jail his whole life because of alcohol. You know, he tried to he tried to be in my life at a younger age, and I gave him opportunities, and he just he never took advantage of them. My mom always telling me sorry. She, she was, you know, you know, just it's it's done a toll on both of us. Hey, mom. Uh, crazy, crazy year and a half. You have done so much in such a short period of time. In the first year after I quit, I and I'm still in a fog. Alcohol gives me confidence. It just gives me some courage. struggle with things we all have our demons um, I couldn't just have that one glass of wine and when I drank wine I I didn't drink it like you know what I'm saying like they do on the on TV shows and stuff I I drink that thing you know what I'm saying like pour up the next one you know what I mean like I'm ready wasting time you know it's just my that was just my mindset I couldn't go out and just chill like I had to be the the drunkest one out there like it's like I was trying to prove a point or something Especially as men, like, we feel like we're so, you know, macho and just feel like we can just, you know, handle everything that, that, that life throws at us when in reality, like, man, if life is hard, you know, we all handle it different, different ways too. And, you know, for me, during that time when life was hard, I would drink. The, the 2019 season, I was putting a lot of pressure on myself and I just didn't feel like I was performing as well as I wanted to be. And so then again, I went back into my hole, man. And I went back into my hole, this time probably worse than ever. And I, now it's hurting me in probably the most important time in my life, you know? Um, almost, losing, almost losing my wife, almost losing my daughter because you know, I had, I, there was a time I hit rock bottom. Um, in the off season after the Houston after the Houston game, 
every single day. That image is in my head. Every single day. That's the reason, I mean, that's, I just remember my eyes waking up and me rolling over and seeing Leah, just, Daddy, let's go play. And I just couldn't move. Every single day. See it every day. Good night, camera. Good night, camera. So I'll see you when I wake up to go catch I'll iguanas. I'll see you when, when I wake up. I'll, I'll go catch iguanas. I've got you! <laughs> I love you so I love you so much, too. You know, I never want to give, I want to give my, my daughter or my kid, you know, to, to someone else to take care of just because I'm not in the right state of mind or I'm not stable enough to to take care of my child, you know, it's, it's something I don't think any parent ever wants to feel. Rachel used to take all the alcohol out of out of the house. Um, you know, she really wanted me to quit drinking, and so in order to do that, you know, she she went one day and took it all out, and we poured it all out. And we had this this wine cellar in the house. Um, I was still depressed and sad from the way we lost to Houston and just the way that I performed and so I just felt like, you know, every day, you know, wake up, drink, you know, forget about it. One day I started, I woke up, started drinking this wine and by 12 o'clock, one, I was, I mean, I was just absolutely lit. Leah's nap time, we get Leah up to the bed and we both, Leah and I both fall asleep and See, I remember her waking, her tapping me, wake, Daddy, wake up, let's go play, let's go play. And, you know, I rolled over, and as I opened my eyes, dude, I just, like, I, I couldn't move. Like, my body was just stuck. I just, I couldn't move my body. I call my brother, and I tell him, like, bro, like, come in here real quick. So he comes up. I'm like, bro, like, that thing has me so drunk right now, I can't take it, really. Leah. It's like, I'm gonna need you, I'm gonna need you to watch Leah for, couple hours I sober up you know I woke up the next day just embarrassed just disappointed I just feel like as a father you know I should be there all the time for her and at that moment I wasn't I want, I want to make her proud. And she doesn't even know that yet. She probably can't even comprehend that yet. But at some point she will. Um, some point she'll you know, see daddy's, all daddy's footballs and all daddy's success stories, but probably, probably wonder, you know, daddy have anything wrong with him growing up. And she'll definitely see, you know, daddy, daddy and mommy struggling, daddy and mommy, uh, going through the worst. So, so I wonder why daddy was an alcoholic for, for she probably wonder if it had anything to do with her. And that's, I, I definitely don't want her to, definitely don't want her to think that. God, that stuff that I'm doing is, so that she knows that I, I love her more than anything in this world. Yeah. And then I, I, I stopped drinking, you know, to give, to be the best father that I can be for her, be the best husband I can be for my, for my wife, because they all deserve that. They all deserve the best version of me. People see us as athletes and see us as these idols that can't be touched or don't have any issues or don't have, there's nothing going on with them, you know, their life is perfect, but we got issues, you know, and I, I want people to understand that it's okay to ask for help about your issues. You know, if I never asked for help, I, I'd still be drinking. 
I went to my first AA meeting. I never spoke. I never spoke. Nope. I just listened. I didn't. I was so nervous to speak. One, I was nervous that somebody was going to recognize me. You know, then it gets out on Twitter that Jordan Poyer is in an AA meeting, and that's I would, I, that was my main concern. And I kind of sit in the back just to start listening, you know. And a couple people speak, and I'll never forget this one lady that spoke. She had been going through a lot. She's been go sober for six years. She said she really wanted to, to have a drink because her dad was dying in the hospital. And she she's crying, telling the stories that my dad was dying in the hospital. I didn't know if I wanted to come to AA. I prayed on it. And I came in hopes to see a new face in here. And thankfully, this young man walked in here and she's pointing at me, crying. Son, I just want to thank you for your bravery for coming in here and doing the right thing. You're taking the right steps. That moment right there stuck with me for a long time because she didn't have to she didn't have to call me out. She didn't have to thank me for coming in there. Not she didn't even know me. You know what I mean? Like, why are you thanking me? But you can really say this in front of a group of strangers that you don't even know um, and get this off of your chest like this. Like, wow, like that's powerful. I wish I could have that person sitting in a chair across from me and just have a conversation with them and Tell him that he's gonna be, he's gonna be all right. That he just needs to admit that he's got an issue and face that issue face on instead of running from all your problems. Honestly, I think he would just tell me that he's lost, and that he needs help, and he needs guidance. And I think that that would be his first step to becoming the person that he's talking to, which is me.